Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today on your lunch break. Hopefully you guys have got a nice sandwich um, or whatever you're having for lunch. Probably something nicer than a sandwich, but hey, <laughs> or at least I hope. Uh, I think for today we're having soup in, in our house, so uh, I'm sure that'll be warming up soon. <laughs> But don't worry, I won't slurp it while I'm uh, while I'm giving this webinar. <laughs> so today's webinar is going to be slightly different to um, some of the ones that we normally run, which are, you know, normally an hour long and a little bit longer. Um, today's just going to be a nice short lunch session um, while you guys enjoy your lunch. And we're going to be going through how to implement a zero trust um, framework into your remote working um, infrastructure right now. Now, obviously, given the current pandemic and the really uncertain times, most businesses have just said to most of their employees to go ahead and work from home. Now, this is awesome for many reasons because it allows people to be closer to home, closer to their family, being able to spend more time with them. And it also means that they can work comfortably or for some people, especially if the, when the schools are closed, um, if you've got kids running around your house I'm sure it's probably more difficult to work um, but the same problem lies across the board whether or not it's easier to work at home for some or not is that it's very difficult to implement security policies from somewhere remotely into um, a, a device that's at home and also making sure that somebody is adhering to those because it's one thing to you know make sure that you've got your single sign on or whatever it might be but if the person is potentially um, you know working and there's a window facing their computer and they're not locking their screen that has the same potential um, issues or you know impact with somebody doing that in the office and I think sometimes especially you know when we're home we feel in our little um in our little bubble should I say um and we often feel like we are you know 100% safe and you know there's going to be no security or cyber kind of threat because you're not inside of an office you're not in some big business's building that could be targeted and also you know you're not on an IP address that might be well known or known to potential um, hackers or even insider threat. Now whilst that is a definite you know, truth in some ways. Um, I think it also is really important to make remote employees aware of the different problems that might have if they don't have security on their router, for example, security on their laptop or desktop, and also then security on other devices that they have access to work documents and um, applications on. Now, when we're talking about zero trust, we basically are discussing the idea that we're going to trust nobody, whether they're inside the organization, working from your office building, or outside the organization, such as working from home. Now, the reason why this is so important, especially now, is because obviously we need security policies that can cross both your office kind of boundaries and also your home ones. And it can be extremely difficult to implement this if you don't have a really easy and flexible tool that can have policies pushed across for all of your applications pretty much with one click. And if you are working from an agent-based SSO authentication or something like that, obviously getting people to download and install their own agents can sometimes be very, very tricky. And this is why I really wanted to bring Okta into the conversation of um, creating a zero trust policy, mainly because it is so easy to deploy. Um, no agents are necessary to deploy out to your um, businesses, devices, computers, workstations, desktop, laptops iPads, tablets, phones, you name it. And also the fact that you can create strong authentication policies for not only user logons, but then also application logons as well. So for example, if we have somebody who's working from home, you may not only prompt them for an extra factor or, you know, um, whether that's a security question or a token, physical token, soft token, et cetera. But you can also prompt for that when you're actually going into the application itself. Now, you could just do that for all applications while we're working from home. Or you could even have a policy where, you know, it just prompts them the first time when they're in the office and they can go into all their apps without. But if you're working from home, you do get prompted every time. And that flexibility and that granular um, 
change that you can make and do that not only to the user sign-on but also the application sign-on is really really important to creating a really nice and full security policy that is zero trust and implement it pretty much you know within a couple of days we have most of our octa deployments done in now let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys and hopefully you're able to see it now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the typical sign-on um workflow for a user signing into Okta. Now what I'm going to do is sign into my demo instance here. And what it's doing is it's using uh, a SAML token to verify my identity from a portal that I was logged into before. So you could use an intranet page or even just a company kind of log on page um, to do this, or you can just go ahead and have people sign straight into the Okta org. Now you'll see that it's asking me to um, add an extra factor. And in this case, we have a push notification. Now I'm going to send the push and it's going to come through on my phone. And I'm just going to say, yes, that was me. And with the iPhones, um, you can actually use Face ID and you can also use biometric um, sensors such as fingerprint scanners and things like that on certain phones as well. So you can really make use of those kind of biometric um, inputs that have happened in other technology like on our phones, iPads, etc. to leverage against your security policy as well. As you can see, I'm straight into all of my applications. And you can also see that we've got a couple of messages from our IT department. This is a really nice way of pushing messages out to your users, especially when they're working remotely, because there is so many good diff changes going on and so many different things. Often those group emails, <laughs> they often just get binned and people forget. And then all of a sudden, you know, they try to access the application and it's down. So it's really nice to have it there and pop up so that people are aware and they can read it there. And then obviously remind themselves of that before they click onto their application or whatever it is. Now I've got all of my different applications here and I can sort them into different tabs. And pretty much access them as and when I want. Now, what's even better about this is the fact that you can prompt for extra factors when you go into applications. And because I'm actually know from my known IP address and from my normal home address, it's gonna let me straight in without any um, extra factors. But if I was signing in from somewhere that wasn't, either I was working from maybe a coffee shop, maybe I was working from on the road, if, I'm, if we were kind of more back to normal and I was visiting people's sites, things like that. Um, or if I was working out of the office, again, if things were a little bit more normal, <laughs> um, then I would be prompted for an extra factor just because I hadn't put that IP address as one of my kind of known areas. Now with Okta, you can use geographic locations, IP addresses, or even device types to either step up authentication, so ask somebody for an extra factor, or for example, um, go ahead and say, okay, we'll let those people straight in, or actually we want to let no one in from there, whether or not they've got an extra factor or not. You know, for example, if you're a UK-based business and they're signing in from outside of the UK. And that means, unfortunately, that somebody who is thinking they could work on their holiday uh, is going to get not allowed in, which they'll probably be thankful for. <laughs> Now, as you can see, we can hook into thousands of applications and Okta has one of the most verbose um, Okta application stores or what we call the OIN, Okta Integration Network. Now, what this is, is a whole selection of applications that have been pre-written for you with all of the um, kind of technical parts, all the stuff under the hood done for you. So all you need to do is input your particular instance or host name, whatever it is, IP address, wherever this application is hosted, and then put in a few pieces of information to authorize it. And what Okta will do is go ahead and pull in all of the existing credentials and then allow you to map that into your Okta application network and then also back to your ID as well. Really, really simple and easy to do. And again, it can all be done remotely as Okta is 100% cloud-based. So how can this actually help you guys? That's probably what you're probably, uh, the main question that you have on your brain. 
And that is kind of three ways, I think. First of all, is to obviously improve and maintain a really good security status and policy and maintain that across all your devices and all of your locations. And being as it looks like potentially we might be working from home for a a little bit longer, really making sure that you have authentication policies and security policies that are going to work with people working from home and people working in the office and other locations is really, really important and integral at this time. Secondly, it will also allow you to push application access and secure access out to application stores, APIs, um, even servers themselves with Okta Access Gateway. And you can put that in instead of like a web application firewall. And lastly, but by no means least, is really to give your users a better experience and reduce the number of support tickets that you have through to your support desk for things that are fairly basic, for things like password changes, account unlocks. And those often make up up to 70% of a service desk's um, load. So you can imagine how much it will help the service desk teams within your organizations to reduce that number of queries and then also put that time towards, you know, potentially doing better things, doing different things, uh, improving the IT strategy or, you know, implementing new products. So it's a really, really useful way to um, kind of just make your end users lives a little bit easier and a little bit easier for them to find what they need but also be able to leverage that against your um, security users or your um, IT service desk um, users so that those guys can actually focus on what is kind of the more important things and not you know say 10 to 15 um, account unlocks and password resets a day. So I know we are tight on time. 20 minutes is difficult to get all of that information in. And I'm sure that might have been a bit of a baptism of fire, so to speak. Um, but I did want to leave for any time for some questions. Um, and if you do have any questions after this, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, Grace.mayor at sumfordassociates.com. I'll go ahead and pop that in the chat as well. So if you do have any questions after this, or maybe if you want a um, demo of Okta, or you want to ask some more questions and get on a call, then definitely don't hesitate to reach out. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have. It's what I'm here for. <laughs> Hopefully you all had a wonderful lunch and you had a nice sandwich or whatever you were eating. I'm going to go and enjoy my soup now. And uh, I hope that everyone stays safe and that you have a great rest of your day and uh, take care, everyone. Thank you so much.